In this series of videos, we've been talking about tactile books, the best way to design them. Um, and this one is all about the practical hands-on, how do you go about making one? Um, so first off, what kind of materials are you going to use? Um, now, there are various different things you could use at, um, to create your tactile book. Um, which ones you pick are going to be fundamentally up to you, um, what things you have available, what your resources are, um, and what you're comfortable working in. So one of the probably easiest and most familiar ways of making a tactile book is through collage. This book here uh, is an example. Um, so here we have card pages, um, which are cut to, cut to size, and they have contrasting materials that have been stuck on. You can use various things to um, attach materials to your page. Um, glue guns, uh, super glue, um, you can sew things on as this cushion's been, been attached, double-sided sticky tape. Um, they're all good. You have to make sure, obviously, that they are strong and that they're non-toxic. The advantage of collage is that the books can be produced quite quickly. They can be quite, materials used in them can be reasonably varied. Um, they're quick and they're quite fun to do. Um, it does have its downsides in that these are not the most robust books in the world. Or you, you can... Um, you have to work very hard to make sure that every aspect of the page is, is fix, firmly fixed down. Um, a child who's exploring by touch will naturally rub across a page um, and will move, um, move any movable bits. Um, however firmly you secure them, collage does have um, its limitations and it does have a, a, a shorter life than some of the more hardier methods. But it is very great, good fun and almost anyone can make a collage book. So another option is fabric. Fabric books have the advantage of being much stronger, more robust. They're very good for children who are in the early stages of learning to explore things by touch, children who perhaps aren't as gentle. Um, and it's worth remembering that, of course, not all children want to be gentle. Um, and some children can't be gentle. Um, it's not uncommon um, for children who have um, more complex medical needs to have trouble with their grip. Um, and involuntary movements that might mean that they can they can grab and pull quite hard, but they might not necessarily be uh, very good at letting go. Um, so not all children will be able to treat a book gently, um, and fabric books are therefore brilliant in that they are very robust. You can you can make something that's really quite tough. They have the advantages too that you can put quite deep objects in them, um, and the book will still shut because the pages are, are soft and, and uh, a little bit more flexible. So this, this crocodile is actually quite a fat fellow, um, but he fits nicely in this book um, because the pages will, will mould round him. Um, so how do you go about making a, a tactile book? When, you, when a child explores across the page, they will be rubbing and touching the page. So you don't want something that's going to be too bent. You need to have a little bit of rigidity in there. Otherwise, the whole thing folds up. So, you make a kind of fabric sandwich. So here's the, the top sheet, the, the, the kind of surface of the page that the, um, the objects will be attached to. Um, and inside is a layer of, um, this is plastic canvas, uh, just to give the whole thing some rigidity. It's really, really good stuff. You can find it in craft shops, pound shops, online. Um, and it has the advantage that you can sew quite a deep uh, object onto it because you can go through that layer of fabric to actually sew it into the canvas, get it really firmly attached. Um, it also means that if we do need to wash the page at all, give it a good sponge, get grimy finger marks or whatever off, um, the page keeps its, its rigidity. However, if you're exploring a page by touch, and you just had fabric over plastic canvas, you'd be able to feel the squares. So to avoid that, you can put in a thin layer of padding. Um, this is very lightweight fleece, but you could use felt. Um, and you make up a little fabric sandwich and then sew it all together. Um, you'll notice that this has a wide seam down one side. And if you're making a fabric book, it's really important to leave a margin where you don't have any of the, the canvas stiffener so that you can attach the book together, the pages together. Um, once you've 
um, put all the objects onto a page and it's much easier to make the book by attaching the objects to the layers, putting the page together and then attaching the pages together, then making up a whole book and then thinking about what you want to put on the pages. You can fasten the pages together in several different ways. So this one has eyelets. You can get eyelet makers again in, in craft shops. So you pun literally punch a hole in the pages and put a little eyelet around there to, to uh, stop it all fraying. And then you can attach it together with rings. Um, these are some metal rings, but um, shower curtain rings are really good as well. Alternatively, you might want to make some holes and then use ribbon or lace to bind the book together. Or if you leave a wide enough margin, you could simply sew the pages together. These have been, been sewn together and then some buttons just put on top for a little bit of extra strength. If you're making a collage book, perhaps the simplest way to bind your book is using comb binding or spiral binding. Now these are um, available um, often in schools, offices, uh, print shops um, and some public libraries will have access to these as well. So it's a really simple way to, to put it all together. There are some other methods of making tactile books which are a bit more specialist. So um, you may have heard of vacuum forming or thermoforming, which is where a plastic, um, a thin plas layer of plastic is moulded around an object. Um, 3D printing also comes up um, a lot in discussion as well. And these all have their own strengths and limitations. Um, so if you're interested in these methods and you've got some ideas on how to use them, then contact Clear Vision. So what about the words? Um, tactile books, obviously the most uh, obvious and, and interesting feature of them are the images, but it's very important to have words in your book as well because children will need those words as a clue to what's going on in the pictures. If you're adding print words to a book, then there are several ways in which you can do it. Um, perhaps the easiest and quickest way is to use a permanent pen and write directly on the page. Um, Alternatively, you could print out your words um, and then put them through a laminator and then sew that plastic onto the page. Um, there's also something um, called Pabric, which is a, uh, just one of the many brand names of um, many printers that are fabric that you can put through an inkjet printer and then print out and iron onto page. These are all possibilities. If you're a really good sewer and there isn't very much text, you might even want to embroider it on. It's up to you. When it comes to Braille, you'll see that Braille takes up quite a lot more space than print font does. It's important that you leave enough room underneath your print so that Braille can be added. Unless you are uh, fluent in Braille yourself and have the correct equipment, don't worry about trying to add it. The Clear Vision Project will add it in for you. So, in terms of the important things to remember about tactile books, they can be summed up in six S's that are all really important elements when creating a book. So the six S's. First of these is safe. We want to make sure that we're giving these books to children, they are completely safe and there's nothing that's going to accidentally harm somebody in there. This means not using anything that's toxic, um, that includes glue. Um, Nothing that is going to be sharp or splinter or when it's um, explored by touch is going to crumble or um, pile or um, have strands or strings come off that could accidentally be a, um, swallowed or be a choking hazard. If you're using some uh, strings or ribbons to attach something to the page, um, then these shouldn't be too long. We're talking about kind of eight, 18, 18 centimetres, seven inches, no longer than that. Small. These books are going to relatively young children, small children, small hands, small laps, small books. Um, they need to be roughly no bigger than about 25, uh, 30 centimetres square. Short. We're not being rude here, but children have quite short attention spans and it takes a lot of attention to navigate and decipher a tactile image. Um, but the books can be really quite short, sort of four to five pages is absolutely fine, no more than eight to ten, or a child is going to um, get tired, um, get bored perhaps, um, 
and they have trouble remembering at the end of the book what it was they were working out at the beginning. Simple. It is very easy to make a tactile image that is too complicated. It is almost impossible to make a tactile image that is too simple. If you're in any doubt, get somebody who isn't part of the design process, somebody who knows nothing about what you're working on, to wear a blindfold, a sleep shade, and explore by touch. If a sighted adult who has the wealth of visual memory, who has millions upon millions of pictures in their head about what things, what things look like, can't decipher a tactile image, then a young child who perhaps doesn't have anything like um, that number of sighted images, maybe they haven't, they've never had any useful vision and they've been blind since birth, so they don't have any mental images at all to draw on, is going to find it very, very difficult indeed. Keep it as simple as you can. It's fine if it looks boring to you, it probably won't be if you're, if you're uh, reading it by touch. Sturdy. I said earlier that not all children can be careful, not all children will be careful. Um, so it's good to have as robust a book as possible. Um, it's hopefully something that's going to be enjoyed and read again and again and again. And obviously reading with your eyes doesn't take any wear and tear on a book, but reading with your fingers really does. So make sure everything is really, really tightly attached to the page and the book itself is going to take some, some wear and tear. And the final is, S is stimulating. It's got to be worth reading. Um, as I said, reading by touch can take effort. Um, so you want to produce something that is going to reward that effort, that is going to be um, sparking to a, ch a child's interest um, and that engages their senses as much as possible. So lots of contrast in terms of texture, lots of varieties of materials, lots of visual contrast as well, which may seem strange, but if a child has a little bit of useful vision, you want them to be able to, to engage that vision as much as possible on the book. So things like bright colour contrasts between the items in the foreground and the, the fabric of the background is really important. Um, and really good textual contrast, so perhaps a smooth background, rough things in front of it, a cold, back, um, cold uh, slippery background, fluffy things in front of it. Keep varying the textures so there's plenty of contrast and it's easy to find things on the page. Um, you could use sparkle, holographic paper or card, uh, metallic elements. These are all great for engaging low vision. Pl plenty of variety. So those are the elements for creating a good, uh, solid, uh, tactile book. There's lots more information and a full bookmaker, bookmaker's guide up on the Clear Vision website, which is www.clearvisionproject.org. I hope you find it interesting, and I hope that your voyage into the creation of tactile books is an enjoyable one.